Welcome back. Time to dive into a first major conversation. Uh, former Lagos State Governor Bola Ahmed Tinubu uh, took a major step toward his ambition of becoming Nigeria's next president by winning the All Progressives Congress presidential primary at a special convention held at Eagle Square, Abuja. Now, Tinubu won the election by a landslide after beating the likes of former Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, and former and Vice President, Yemi Oshibajo, as well as Senate President, Ahmed Lawan. Now, Tinubu may have emerged with a landslide, but he faces a tough electoral battle against his longtime friend, Atiku Abubakar, and a possible third force candidate. Now, uh, to help us analyze his chances, we're joined by our uh, guests, Mondi Ubani, a public affairs analyst, and Ezekiel and I took also a public affairs analyst. Gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, well, basically, let's start off with um, your, your, your initial reaction to uh, the emergence of Bola Metinubu as the uh, flag bearer of the APC. Any surprises there? I'll start with you, Mr. Obani. Uh, well, we, there are no surprises as such, you know, since they, they use what they call delegate uh, a process uh, for the emergence of their flag bearer. If they had chosen consensus, which was their initial plan, uh, or which was uh, resisted by some of the forces in the APC, including the governors of the Northern region, uh, that they actually won led to the emergence of uh, political uh, consensus. Uh, the initial reaction uh, of those who opposed Lawa, uh, Lawa was announced by the party's uh, chairperson, uh, and they wanted probably to test the ground in waters. And they, 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 they got resistance and, and vehement resistance. And that's why they now eventually had to go for delegate election. Now, if you, if you look at that particular process, the names of those aspirants were not even on any, on any, on any ballot box. There was no, people used name, name, their bio to write names, meaning these guys were not even ready for any electoral process. There was no issue of democratic process being employed. They wanted to just impose uh, somebody uh, by way of consensus, but the Electoral Act, you know, was actually one of their debate because the Electoral Act specify what amounts to consensus. All the parties must agree and and, and in writing to withdraw uh, for those the person that will emerge as a consensus candidate. And when did that did not happen, they had no other choice than to now hurriedly arrange uh, that process that took place. And of course, before that, uh, the permutation was that if they go into any electoral process by way of voting, uh, Bola Tinubu had actually uh, had all the governors in the northern region on his side and had actually traversed uh, several other states uh, outside the northern region in order to get the requisite vote, you know, and then of course it has big pocket like uh, Atiku. And, and, those, and those were the uh, factors that actually worked in his favor. It was because they allowed democratic process to take place. If it was by issue of consensus, I uh, know which they wanted to use, he had no chance. And he, he himself also acknowledged the fact when he won uh, that he never expected to win because he was not within their contemplation. That led to the adverse, adverse you know, state, you know, at that time because he knew the handwriting on the wall was, uh, it was not favorable. Okay. Um, but, but let's also look at some of the concerns, especially. I mean, uh, during uh, the primaries, you found that, that at the time where you had uh, the likes of the vice president coming out to give a speech. He, he seemed to have the acceptance of the people, cheering him, you know, and hailing him at all points and, you know, going on to say they love him. But, but, but um, on the other hand, some persons feel very um, displeased with the result as, you know, uh, it feels like there were a lot of hopes and anticipation that the vice president would clinch onto the ticket. The truth of the matter, is that if the Eurovars wanted the best, you know, from their stock in order to emerge as the president of this country, the best person, in my own view, the personal view, is the MOC Yeah, uh, someone will say he has been with the president for the past eight, almost seven years now. Now, all those ideas he was formulating, all those things he was saying, why didn't he actually learn uh, so that the Nigerian dream, you know, all of us are dreaming for should have been the reality, because he said many things in his uh, speech. But the point is that if you find out what happened within the presidency and then within the vice presidency of Osibato, he was never allowed to operate fully in his full capacity. It would be a different ballgame mentally if he's clearly in charge of the affairs of this nation. So if the Yorubas had wanted the best, that would actually change the question of this country in terms of having 
a, a, a technocrat that can run Nigeria and remove Nigeria from the door from where we are presently. The best candidate, you know, from the Yoruba stop, and that is the truth, is the person of Yemi Oshiba. No, but just before you know, that, we... That, that I mean, just before we have um, uh, Ezekiel Yai to come in now and share his thoughts, you were saying that if the Yorubas, we're talking about a region now, wanted or yeah. would want the best for Nigeria, then they would have gone for a different yeah. candidate. But the delegate is, yeah. it's not just limited, you know, to a certain region. It cuts across the entire yeah. state of the Federation, as long as you that have the very, APC. Very, very, that, that, that is a very intelligent question. Uh, uh, the point is that the, the, the ruling class, uh, the elites that have always held this country hostage, will not allow the best to emerge in this nation unless there is a radical, you know, turn of event, you know, from the from the populism, the electorate, who will now have the opportunity in 2023 to decide the fate of this country. The, the delegates who have been delegated by the government, and they have created so much, you know, from the system, and they want the status quo to remain, because the status quo favors them. But the majority of Nigerians are not enjoying the resources of the country. They're not enjoying this country that all of us know is clearly blessed. So those guys who want the status quo to continue, and that is what they did. You could see, they, you know, they, that they have actually put out the, the delegates. The delegates were not interested with the affairs of nation. What they're interested is one in their pocket, and of course, from the directive of their godfathers, who have told them who should emerge as the winner. And so the reality is, as I'm saying, as I'm speaking today, if Nigeria wants a break from the status quo, then we have it in the person of Yemi Oshibajo, and we have it in the person of Peter Obi. These are the kind of people that can change the affairs of this nation if they also talk about restructuring Nigeria and then having the kind of leadership in them. You know, you look at their dissident, look at their personality, look at their knowledge, look at their worldview, look at their competence, look at their, you know, their, their, their qualification. These are the kind of person that can be able to turn around Nigeria. Peter Obi and Yemi Oshibajo. For the ruling class who have monopolized power since 1999, we never allowed that status quo to be changed. It's an unfortunate thing, but Nigerians can change that situation at the ballot box in 2023, if they so desire, if they so desire. Mm. Right. We'll, we'll get to that point. Uh, 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 coming over to you before we, we delve into the issues of the chances of uh, Tinubu, uh, uh, please permit me to look at still the roster uh, of, of the other uh, aspirants. Um, this has been, um, even from the way the conversation has gone this morning, uh, touted as a race between uh, PYO and BAT. Uh, but we can see that, that from the uh, figures, the results, a certain CRA uh, came second. You know, um, um, one, one person who was a member of the APC and now the PDP, uh, Sheo Sani, senator, uh, uh, formerly representing the good people of Kaduna, he said that um, if Buhari had a wild card, if he had to pick one person, um, that it would have been a Mechi. Do, do you think? Do you think this is the case? And um, are you surprised that he came second? Yeah. You see, <clears throat> talking about being politically savvy, Amechi is a political strategist again. A lot of times, people credit uh, Buhari coming to um, um, <laughs> um, Jagaban. You know being instrumental. I'm not sure I quite agree with that. The person that just turned the whole thing around in 2015, I believe, was Mr. Rotimi Amechi. When Amechi pulled out of EDP and took five governors along, he drove a death nail into PDP. And it was the beginning of the end of the PDP. For me, it was Rotimi Amechi. When you have a man who understands dynamics, the same Amechi, looking forward, knew one, two, three things to do that will get the heart of Mr. President. He understood that he's a man that does not forget favors, which was why during the dying minutes, the name of President, former President, good Lord Jonathan, started coming to the fore. Number two, he knew that Mr. President had a soft spot for, let me hit it direct, his 
brothers across the boundary, Niger. And Amechi carried on this railway project to Niger as if his life depended on it. And he knew that that would be a soft spot for Mr. President, who would want, and it's like, let me not say that the project was delayed or stalled or something. It could have been lack of funds. It could have been a strategy. If it was completed, it was completed. But if it was not completed, it was likely for Mr. President being who he is, or is understood to be, that he would say, this man that started this project, let me make him, because once he becomes president, he will complete that project. Mr. Amechi, I see him as a strategist. While he was doing that, he was working the numbers as well, you know? So all put together, he did not have a good hold on the governors, not being a governor himself. Former governor and present governor, they are two different things. The former governors don't have too much love for the, or the present governors generally don't seem to have too much love for the former governors. So that governor bit wasn't there for him. So what he did was to identify with certain political bases. And at the end of the day, you can see the performance. Contrast that with our professor, Uchibanjo. You know, he, he, he had no constituency politically. And he did not have that X factor with Mr. President. So I didn't really see him as somebody that Mr. President was anything to write him about as concerning. Because during the time that he was vice president, I really tried to look at the body language. If not that, he was a wise man that just stayed loyal, he would have been as inconsequential as anything. Because the presidency didn't show me as a person that, oh, they saw him as like their poster boy of some sort. So all considered, one is Politically speaking, Jagaban was a master of the game. Oh. Emotionally or sentimentally speaking, Rotimi Amechi was better. In terms of capacity and performance, yes, the Professor Shivan Jones stands head and shoulders above in my, in my rating, but do they really care about performance? Look at the seven years that they've had those already. Is it performance based? No. All right. In uh, my opinion. Okay. Uh, is it clear? So we would like to bring to this point um, uh, Chris Nwokobia, who is the convener of the Nigeria First Movement. Uh, Chris Nwokobia, thank you for your time. Are you there, please? All right. While we're trying to get. Uh, uh, to hear from Chris Wokobia. Back to you, um, Isikang Yaitouk. Um, the PDP, People's Democratic Party, went north, and the APC has gone south. Um, have they made the right political uh, move? OK. I'll tell you this as fast as possible. The younger people will not know about carburetor. In cars, if you're one of us that never had a new car, we always had Tokumbos. So we understood about carburetor very well. Your car will not move unless the fuel is able to go through the carburetor properly and the combustion and all that. So there were people that were specialists at carburetor, carburetor. Now, a man long after carburetor had given way to injector, who was not in tune with the times, looking for a fantastic mechanic, went for that man that was a specialist in carburetor. Unfortunately, cars no longer use carburetor. APC and PDP are carburetor specialists in economic management. So leave them. They will keep looking for that mechanic that understands carburetor. Nigeria has moved to injector. So as long as you keep having this conversation of APC PDP, APC PDP, you are looking for the best carburetor mechanics. Nigeria has moved on. That is why a lot of times I'm not too 
you know, a patient with all this, talking about PDP, APC, PDP, APC. I want to talk about Nigeria. Um, let's have Mondo Bani now, and he's, he's also still with us um, on, on the show, and let's share his thoughts. We'll definitely get back to you. Uh, Mondo Bani. I'm here, I'm here. All right. Is it about the carburetor? Is it about the carburetor example? <laughs> no, we're going to move away <laughs> from the carburetor. Maybe we'll look at the, you know, uh, the capacity of internal carburetor and what will happen um, if uh, one or two, you know, goes wrong. But let's come to this point now. A, a lot of people, as much as some persons will not agree uh, that, uh, you know, the former governor of Lagos State has really been very instrumental, you know, to having the party uh, being what it is in terms of contributing and ensuring that the party uh, has the structure and what it is today. That's the APC. But at this point, do you see fractions uh, with him emerging as, uh, you know, the presidential flag, flag bearer? Do you see uh, factions? Do you see fracas? Do you see bickering uh, with this outcome? I, I am not God. Uh, I'm yet to hear. Uh, yes, I'm not. I'm yet to hear any of those uh, who lost, you know, saying anything to the contrary. You know that they are not part of APC or they are they are pulling out of APC. Even though somebody sent me a, a video that he says is trending, where uh, Lawan and some of the Northern governors visited that. I don't know how correct or how correct that video is. Uh, they, 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 somebody sent it to me this morning saying that immediately after the election, emergence of uh, Bola Chilubu, uh, Lawan, who is the current uh, senior president, and some of the northern governors paid the visit to Atiku. I don't know how true that is. You know? So I, I, I'm, I asked him, are you really sure this is a recent video or an old one? So it's important we really verify. And so some people are now with this theory that probably they have allowed a southerner in the person of Bola to emerge. That at the end of it all, that the northerners will likely, you know, gravitate towards uh, Atiku, who happens to be a northerner and of course a Fulani. That again is something we need to really look at, and then decipher from the days and, and months ahead, you know, uh, towards uh, 2023. We don't know whether there is going to be any factionalization in APC as a result of the emergence of uh, uh, Mr. Bola Tudubu. But Bola Tudubu himself has to actually mend fences. And that is the truth of the matter. Now that he has a match, he has to reach out to every of those he has fired, even those who uh, went against him. You know, but he said a statement yesterday saying I'm, I have forgiven and or, I'm, I'm angry that somebody came up, you know, even making reference to the Senate president. You know, he has to be a bit more tactful. You know, sometimes he, over, he talks about what even yesterday during his opening speech, I mean, his acceptance speech. The wife and every other person, they were feeling so uncomfortable with some of the things that he, want, he was saying and all that. If there's any way they could stop him, I would advise him to stick to whatever has been written down most times, you know, because he goes over all the time. So it, this requires that. Now that he has won, he requires everyone along uh, for him to actually succeed in 2023. So those who are advising him, those who are close to him should be able to advise him what to say and what not to say at this point, not to offend some of the person, especially the sensibilities of uh, some other regions like North and even the Southeast. It's very important. Uh, all right, uh, but back to you, uh, Ezekiel, yeah, to come. I, I did earlier ask you about the, uh, the move down South for uh, the APC as compared to the move uh, to the North for the PDP, this time Southwest versus uh, Northeast. Let's look at the, the personalities and the political clout of both um, candidates uh, for the two major parties in the country. We're not saying by any stretch that this is going to be a two-horse race. That's for you, our analysts, to say, and Nigerians also to determine. But um, at this point, uh, it's APC, PDP that are the two leading parties. Is Bola Tinubu the right candidate for the All Progressives Congress? Looking at the, the, the clout that he possesses compared to the clout uh, politically um, and the history and pedigree of Atiku Abubakar. He is one of the best carburetor mechanics. So for the APC, he is the best person they could pick. But I will say this, and it's important that we alert people. You know, 
there's, there's a story you tell, a lie so often that it starts to sound like the truth. We need to understand in informing Nigerians and their analysis, the current electoral act. In the past, usually we talk, you know, do all this election, primaries, it, it gets into November, December, we go for Christmas, by the time you come in is January and February's election. So what you don't have is that time of engagement. In the current electoral act, we have six to eight months of engagement. All this issue of fixation with the two big parties, two big parties. Have you thought of Mr. Tinubu facing either let me bring in a man that we talk about all the time, Peter Obi, or the new kids like Dumebi Kachiku for eight months engaging in intellectual discourse. Do you really see these people as being able to engage Nigerians for the next six months? We are going to do an analysis, the synthesis, the roadmap to Nigerians, blockchain technology, and the rest of them, have we really sat down and thought about it? This fixation on, we had our primaries yesterday, and nobody's even talking about it. And these are people who are coming, I know we take topics and talk about them, but you see, the end of the topic is to inform Nigerians. I want you to tell Nigerians that these were going to be engaged by the intellectual and, and vibrancy of the likes of Peter Obi and Dumebi Kachiku for now. These are not to talk of a man like Kwan Kwaso that I have so much respect for any day, any time. A man who had sight. Let me say this very quickly, and then maybe my time may be up. The first is that whatever ideas you have, if you don't find a vehicle to be on the ballot, it is voicemail. So your first strategy is how will I be on the ballot? When you are on the ballot, then you have six to eight months of engagement. That is what Peter Obi did. He moved out and got on the ballot. That is what Kwan Kwaso did. He moved out and got on the ballot. That is what Mr. Kachiku is. He's been a PDP person all along. He moved out and got on the ballot. These are political strategists who understand that unless you are on the ballot, whatever ideas you have is voicemail. Now we're about to get ready for round two, engagement of Nigerians. Look at the millions of youths that have always been on the social media because they had nothing to excite them. See what's happening. Peter Obi, I give him the credit, is starting to move them out. With that, get your PVC campaign. It's a strategic you know, movement. First is, oh, I get my PVC. Second is, oh, I like the ideas. I like what's being said. Third is getting to be part of the electionary process. These carburetor mechanics are not going to be worth our topic in the days to come. We still have Mondo Bani. Mondo Bani, quickly, let's get to it now. Uh, as, as, as much as we would want to, you know, stay with the current reality, but we can also take out the facts, uh, what it is. And uh, the question here would be, do you see a keenly contested elections between two friends in 2023, especially at the time where you have, um, you know, news brokering that, uh, uh, brokering that you have the supposed thought force or other parties that should be uh, should come up as thought force beginning to have some cracks at this point i must tell you that i love uh, uh, ezekiel's uh, optimism and and, uh, and and keen interest you know in his analysis about what is going to play out i wish that the nigeria uh, of, of of his dream is actually has a match i mean where money does not play so much a uh, role in choice of our leadership. But I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this, the level of uh, in, uh, poverty uh, has actually made everyone, most times slaves, you know, 
even to this carburetor mechanics, you know, because at the end of the day, what may likely, unless there is a radical spiritual change, what I mean radical, that is the end, end time, you know, end time spirit now envelops the Nigerian youth, both that of the North and South, and say, look, enough of the status quo, we are ready now for a change. Unless that end time spirit comes all over again, I still see that Nigerians may have recourse to the mechanic, I mean, carburetor mechanics, you know, in, in the light of what happened at the, at, the, at the primary level, you know, in the APC. I had thought that the way they chaired the, the, the vice president, you know, when he came to make his speech, the way he was accepted, the, the, you know, the ovation would have actually translated into the electoral vote. Nobody he didn't see it. Maybe those guys were, were not actually the delegates. The delegates were maybe silent and quiet and watching the event. Of course, they have already made up their mind. So if we don't have such spirit of those who cheer, having the electoral value in enthroning leadership, we may have to have a recourse again to the carburetor mechanics who we want to take over the running of Nigeria. But I just pray that Ezekiel's spirit and his analysis and his enthusiasm and of course, you know, his optimism, he, you know, is every, is what, what I share. I just want a new Nigeria. I, just, I don't care where anyone comes from. That, that is the reality. I don't care. I don't care. The person that can move Nigeria forward now is what I'm looking for. The person that can come and be on the saddles and then change the equation and make Nigeria to be one of the best countries in the world is what Obani is looking for and what majority of the young ones in this country are looking for. You know, we're not looking for those who will come and play politics, the normal politics of, you know, taking over Nigeria for their personal interests and for their friends and cronies. That is not the kind of Nigeria I look at. And if we continue in that boat, Nigeria will implode. Nigeria will explode. Nigeria will actually be destroyed. Right. Right. And we cannot afford to go back to Israel, I mean, to, to Egypt, you know. So I hope that Ezekiel's analysis of a new Nigeria that is looking now for the, 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 the injector uh, mechanics, we're an in injector age, we know that can that can really take over Nigeria and run Nigeria in the way Nigeria should be run, where it will be an inclusive governance. We are everyone will participate in making Nigeria one of the greatest uh, countries. But just in the world. before Kofi comes in now, uh, Monde Ubani, I mean, sometimes yes. perception is it's uh, more important than facts, uh, if you look That's at right. it. That's right. And uh, in, in this particular case now, the question is do you see uh, a contention? Do you see uh, having all the parties contending with this dominant ideology that a lot of Nigerians, including yourself and Ezekiel and Yaito, are thinking that we can get. Re um, get off with. I mean, we can, we can get, get it right. With. It, it, especially, uh, you know, especially at a time where we're already beginning to hear that, you know, there might just be uh, some kind of trouble in, in, in this political party. We're talking about factions now. And we know how that sits. It doesn't sit well, you know, with the political process because it ends up in, in having court cases and litigations. And most times you probably might not have a candidate or a flag bearer. So, so what are your thoughts? Or should we be looking at this, um, you know, elections for 2023 between two friends? Yes, it's a very complex question. You know, as I said earlier, I am still a human being. I, I'm not God. I can't see future. But the one I'm seeing now is what I'm going to analyze. And, and the reality on ground is that uh, Atiku is a major contender in this race. Bola Tunubu that has just emerged, the reality on ground is that he's a major contender. He has big pockets. And the level of general poverty in the country makes him very relevant. It makes also Atiku very relevant in the political race. Now, in the issue of ideas, I think the man that everyone now is gravitating towards is P2B. But how long are we going to sustain this is what you know is left in the in the domain for Nigerians. You know, if we're going to sustain this issue of get your PVC, let us now change the status quo. And if we continue in education. In indoctrinization, you know, make sure that everyone is, you know, indoctrinated and make sure that people are carried along by mobilization, that Nigeria must change and we need a new Nigeria. If we sustain this tempo for eight months that is remaining, I can assure you that may be a shift. But if we continue with the old order of money politics, I tell you that Bola Tinubu has large pocket. Bola Tinubu and Atiku has large pocket. And they may likely be the one that will influence the political outcome, you know, in the light of the general poverty in the ground. I'm very realistic about this. The general poverty has, even within the MBA that I belong, even within the MBA, election is taking place in July. 
you find out that those with deep pocket are those that usually emerge, and they are the you know the really the, the really contenders in the race that is actually you know playing out because in July MPA is going for election to elect their their president and all that, and those with big pocket are the one who are actually making the difference. So poverty, general poverty in the land is what I am afraid of. But if Nigerians wake up from slumber and say enough. We are not interested in your money. We are not interested in a bag of rice. We are not interested in whatever you are giving us. We are interested in having a new country. All of us shall be proud of. Then I can assure you that the equation will change. And Nigeria will come up with a new leader okay. that will change you know, the situation of things right. in the country. That is my prayer. That is Ezekiel's prayer. That is the prayer of many of the majority of uh, young ones in the country. All right. Yeah, we, we have at this point, thank you, Mondo Bani, Chris Nwokobia, who is the convener of the Nigeria First Movement. Chris, are you there? Very good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, Bola Tinbu has said in his speech, uh, uh, in his speech before the voting by delegates uh, at that uh, special convention of the All Progressives Congress, that if uh, chosen as the uh, candidate of, of the APC, um, he, as president, will replicate uh, what he accomplished as governor of Lagos State. Um, what are your thoughts on Tinbu's accomplishments as governor of Lagos, of Lagos State? and uh, how that stands him in good stead to be uh, a successful president of Nigeria? I think I didn't get your question. All right, Tinubu, while speaking to delegates at the um, APC Special Convention, says, said that he will replicate his achievements as governor of Lagos State if elected as president of Nigeria. What are your thoughts on his achievements as governor of Lagos State and how that stands him in good stead to be a successful president of Nigeria? Let me say very importantly that uh, what those who are behind the Chinubu candidacy must do is to play down on that line of argument. And I say that advisedly. Lagos today, and my family is in Lagos, I practically live in Lagos. Uh, I shuttle between Lagos and Abuja, and I know what Lagos has become. So every so often I hear about what has been done in Lagos in about 22 years of Tinubu and his uh, followers. I just suppose it was four years of Jack on Day, and you find out that what the Nigeria will need is not so much of the Nigeria that uh, Lagos has become with so much resources. So I think that those who are managing Tinubu's campaign can do better by raising fundamental issues than telling us about Lagos. To travel from Suleri to the island takes you about two hours for a journey that is less than 15 minutes. To traverse the entire state that is not up to 5,000 square meters uh, uh, is a tragedy of sorts. So I, I think that the time has come for them to package a better campaign. But let me say this, that uh, 2023 is going to be an interesting, interesting uh, political journey and spectacle because we have, for the two major political parties, two heavyweights, if you like. Uh, the PDP has gone the way of uh, Anatiku Abubakar, who is in his 70s, and the APC has gone the way of Asuadibola Ahmed Tinubu, who is in his 70s. And um, we have the other candidates in other parties. I think that the challenge for the soul of our country has become increasingly deafening. And I believe that the time has come for the Nigerian people to interrogate the candidates effectively, efficiently, and effectually. Okay, and, and if you ask me, the media and indeed the people must begin to interrogate the issues, interrogate the manifestos, interrogate the candidates, and then we'll take it up from there. Okay. Um, let, let me bring this to you now. I mean, in the course of this conversation, we have Mondo Bani, who is also um, on this uh, panel, and uh, Ezekiel Onyaito. But uh, prior, before you came in with your thoughts, he's talked about the level of general poverty in Nigeria, 
And the fact that you can't take that out, and, and that has really played, especially at the point where we have to choose flag bearers at different political levels. So, I mean, do you see, you say uh, 2023, it's going to be very tangible and fantastic, but um, do you see um, the same money back politics or money induced kind of politics um, taking the center stage? Sadly, that's my fear. Um, the guys have. Uh, demonstrated that reality without a provocation. If you ask yourself how did the two major candidates emerge in the APC and indeed the PDP, it was a heavily dollarized process, a heavily monetized process. And so also will the presidential election be the two major big pockets and so uh, they're very likely to monetize the process. But what is important here, like I said, is that the masters of people must begin to interrogate uh, the candidates, and effectively so. We must ask questions. It's about our future and the future of our children. We must interrogate them effectively. We must interrogate them profusely. We must interrogate them profoundly and locate the best of the options, market the best of the options, and see if we can deliver uh, to our people the best of the, uh, the best of the candidates and push them the best way we can. All right. Um, I'll come back to you, uh, Ezekiel. I yeah, took... Um uh, there have been concerns raised uh, by some observers about the health uh, of uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Do you think this should be an issue? Do you see this as, a, as an issue going forward? Should Nigerians be concerned? Nigerians should be concerned, very concerned. Under our watch, we had, we lost the president, um, President Yaradwa, late President Yaradwa, his soul rest in peace. And we know how it put us in trouble in this country, and we had to come up with the doctrine of necessity. Immediately, almost immediately after him, we had President Goodluck Jonathan, who enjoyed good health, he was in office. And when he left, we came back to President Obasem um, um, Buhari, and we know how much time he spent outside the country. You know how we were distracted at a time that 24 hours it's too short for us to get done what we need to do. We had the time reduced to 12 hours. It doesn't take rocket science for you to know that it's going to get worse. Now, we are, things have gone worse than they were in the time of President Buhari, or like they are now. We are moving into a new dispensation. Lord have mercy. We need somebody who hit the road running from day one. Who, you know, if you have a, a race track, where maybe a relay race and the last runner has like um, slowed down. You want the next runner to not only you know, catch up, but move on. So you need somebody who is going to not do the normal race, but is going to do an extra race so that he can catch up before he can think of winning. At a time like this, you need somebody that is going to be like, like firing from all cylinders. And we don't have that luxury of, is he well, is he not well? Please, have we no option? All right. Let, Let me end this note, because it's very important to me. It is that if we keep doing boxing, and the competition is boxing, 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 a time comes, at that point, you need people who are heavy punchers, we you know, rich in strength and everything. And you know that we need to bring intellectualism. So you can actually introduce a new competition called spelling. When you introduce this new competition called spelling, lots of intellectuals start to emerge and all those things. I want the media to know that this fixation on these two parties, two parties, two parties, is an evil wind that will never blow this gov this country any good. All right, we, we have to go. Why, yeah, we have to go, you, sir. Why don't we? Why don't you introduce a new, new, new dynamics of who? What are the paradigms 
that will give us the Nigeria of our right. dreams. Gentlemen, we, 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 we're out of time. We're, we're out of time. Yes, yes. So, uh, uh, I mean, Paul Amitunbo has said in his speech that um, he will not just be the president, but will assemble a world-class world team uh, to work with. Uh, maybe that might just be uh, a way out, you know, if he... Uh, Please, we have options. So, Gross, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, of course, uh, it's equal I took Monday Obani and uh, Chris Nwokobia of the Nigeria Festival of Men. Gentlemen, it's been a thrill having you. And we'll keep watching as uh, events unfold in this political season. I think uh, there's more uh, that will unfold as time goes on. It's been our thank pleasure. You, thank you, for you. Bunny, why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? <laughs> well, very interesting indeed. Mercy, we've come to the end of the road for today. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, I was hoping that we had more time, but maybe we should begin to consider the issue of independent candidacy. It would be a conversation for another day here. Yeah, that's the it, it, still, it still won't change anything. Uh, you no, you no, still it, will it have might. to go through people to get to people. I mean, I mean, so you, you, you have a point where, for instance, if you throw yourself at a certain political party because you know a certain political party will not absorb you into the system for whatever reason, and then you begin to have all of the same issues, we understand that people would be there. But if you have a general acceptance, because at the independent candidacy, you don't need to begin to say you want to have structures a different part. You just need to have general acceptance, and that might be the case, but that's the size of our conversation right. this morning on The Breakfast. If you missed out on any part of it, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko. Have a fantastic morning. And my name is Kofi Bertels. We'll return tomorrow up next to News at 9. Stay with us.